Okay, so that's what the bevel, caulking bevel will look like. This, well, this is called a rabbit. I mean the rabbit. Okay. A traditional deck would have a bevel, but this, uh, this is not a, <laughs> thankfully not a traditional deck because they always leak. They traditionally leak. Well, the traditional stuff always leaks in the traditional places. <laughs> <laughs> Keith is working on the transom uh, piece right here. What is, what is this piece called? What are you guys calling this? It's actually a, it's a, it's a transom reinforcement. This is uh, first class teak here. Okay. This is good stuff. Make the king plank fit the opening, not not the king plank first, and fit everything to it. Yeah, you can't do that. I mean, you can do it if you really like to work with a chisel for weeks at a time, and your name is Geppetto. Thursday, February twenty something. Towards you, sir? Probably. <laughs> you really need to figure out where it's going. You need a good one. You need a good one. You gotta go down low. Okay, you ready? Yeah, so what's the process? Take us through the process. So you, you already cut these panels. Oh yeah, we cut them and made them a while back. Yeah. So, uh, and we sealed them with Smiths and stored them. <clears throat> Otherwise you would, normally if you were just putting them right away, we wouldn't have sealed the tops. Okay. But since they were stored in the storeroom, keep them stable, everything was sealed and painted already. And when you put them back down, were they pretty good? Were they pretty close or perfect? Perfect. perfect. Yeah. yeah, nothing changed. Okay. Did you have to trim back that little edge again? And this edge right here? Yeah, that edge, yeah. No, no. That you had already oh, done. No, no, no. We did that a long time ago. Right. So we just keep it nice and clean as we go. And it's all sanded and ready to go. Ready to done. Ready, ready to, to receive the teeth. Great. All the bumps are out of it. Clear it in here. Completely smooth. Ready for the glue. Tip to tail. Oh, you, so you've sanded it as well. I yeah, see. we had to prep it once it's down. Keith is working on the transom uh, piece right here. What, are, what is this piece called? What are you guys calling this? Um, it's actually a it's a it's a transom reinforcement. Is its primary its primary purpose? It's to reinforce this aft this tramp the aft end of the sailboat. Mm -hmm. And these are where some where some stays attached to. And uh, this metal piece reinforces this whole section of the boat, the aft section of the boat. So, and it was all kind of uh, bent and, and what well, it had been designed for a different uh, like it, a. It was it was. It had some corrosion issues down here at the bottom, and it also uh, needed to be re. The elevation on this needed to be changed because Doug, in the process of rebuilding this section of the boat, um, the elevation of this was changed. So this had to be reworked and re. Um, resurfaced, basically. How far? What? How far off was it from being, uh, you know, flat and straight? About three eighths of an inch. Wow. So after we changed all the elevations and everything, it was about three eighths of an inch off. So we basically worked it this way down to the, down to the piece, of, the new piece of wood that was put in here. That's so, great. Anyway, it's. So all the pieces are original. They've just been repurposed yep. and uh, cleaned up and. Yep. 
And so how do you feel? Do you feel they're all solid? Yeah. 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 It's, it's all back to back to where it should be. So, right. Um, yeah, is there any more work to be done on this, or is it just needs to be installed? At this point? Um, it needs to be polished still. It needs to be polished. Yeah. So, other than that, it's it's ready to go. So you'll take it, all these pieces out of here now, take them back to the shop, polish them? Um, or do we I, do that here? I, I outsource all that, I'll polish it. Okay. So that's, that's something that I try not to do much anymore. <laughs> okay. It's just, I don't want to do it anymore. So right. Anyway, right. I, do, I do all the, the, re, the, the forming and the, and the restructuring and get it to the point where I can pass it off to a polishing shop. Great. So, so when do you think we'll have the pieces back then for installation? Um, I'm going to guess a couple weeks. Okay. So, Great. Let's guess a couple weeks. Polishing is one of those things where you have to kind of, you have to be patient. <laughs> now, this a, doesn't show, right? This will be buried under wood or will this, piece? This piece will show. Oh, it will this, show. This face and this and this. Those this pieces portion obviously of this will portion. show. Yeah. So. All right, so that's why it's nice to have them polished. Yeah. So, um, everything came back. I resurfaced most of this with a scotch brite and passivated everything with, pass with uh, phosphoric acid and scotch brite it and that kind of brings everything, it kind of gets everything neutral to where they can put a can fairly consistent finish on it now as far as polishing goes. Great. But this, did this piece have to be re-welded here? Was that a new yeah, weld there? Yeah, this whole piece at the bottom has been, has been re-welded. Got it. So you had to cut that off somehow? Yeah. What, what do you use to cut it off? Bandsaw. Bandsaw. Okay. Very good. So, well, thank you very much. Thanks for your, uh, your good work and your participation. We'll see it back on in a couple of weeks, hopefully. First impression was to replace, a, replace most of this, but after I cleaned it up, I took and sandblasted or uh, garnet blasted everything. Right. And after looking at it, it was like, you know, let's save it. Because a lot of times when you put new stuff on, a, on an older boat, yeah. a vintage boat, it does not look like it belongs. No, it's, it's just better if you, if you can keep the original, the original look going on. Absolutely. It's definitely a labor of love. A labor of love. What do you got going here, Doug? Well, this is a uh, little jig we set up to rabbit the decking. And I'm just trying to keep this out of the way. So I'll put it down here. I can see a feather stick in a I know. Not too many people know what those are. This thing here? Yeah. What's it called? Feather board or feather stick. Feather stick. Holds a piece of wood up against there, against the fence, see? Yeah. And, uh, is that clever? Yeah, yeah, but they don't, there's no, there's, this thing doesn't have like a, another slider, like, you know. You know, like a paper tray, so you can hold it from both sides? You don't have to. The fence holds it. The blade's just cutting into the fence a little, see it? Right. So it ends up making this. Oh, I see, you're making the, the, the bevel from mm -hmm. the pocket, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that little to, guy's gonna hold it down. Just has to be on there, it's nothing. Because the, the depth of that rabbit. Yeah, is important. Sure. It should be roughly three times the width. Arbitrary. Okay. Because you're gonna sand some of it out, you know. Okay. All right. Let's see. You can't pull it out. You have to push all the way through. And the featherboard won't let it come back. Not that that's important on this cut, but just one of those. We don't have knots. Featherboard. <laughs> Hold down. And uh, you see how this piece of wood here is uh, smooth on one side edge. See that? I can't see that it's smooth. I well, can see how feel rough it. it is? Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's because of the stock that we got. It was just barely thick enough. So we don't care about this, the rough part. Okay. Because that rabbit's going to take it out. But you're saying this particular piece? All of these. They're all like The that. vast majority of them, yeah. I mean, some of them we can get it smooth, but we don't care because it doesn't matter. It's going to be gone. Now, when you go to put this rabbit in, you have an A side and a B side. I see. This one has a, this piece this, 
that doesn't mean anything. That's actually gonna, all this turns gray, you'll never see that again. Okay. But this side here, you see that? Yeah. No, that like you'll that. see. You'll, well, it's nothing wrong with it. But does that run through the whole board? No, see down here? Yeah, so that was so, just the top piece. Yeah, so this is our A side under here. Gotcha. That's the side we put the rabbit on. Now I'm gonna be making some noise for a while. Okay, let's do it. How many rabbits are you making? However many. Oh, all these. Now they're not all milled to the right height yet, but you put the rabbit in first? Yeah, because then you mill off the bottom. Gotcha. Because we started with three quarters of an inch. <laughs> That was a laugh. It wasn't any good. Rough edge? Yeah. Okay, so when you put the next plank against it, see how it's gone? See? Right, because it's underneath. Roger that. But the wood itself, even though it's rough, is good quality enough to be. Oh, absolutely. This is uh, first class teak here. Okay. This is good stuff. It is. Okay, so that's what the bevel, caulking bevel, will look like. It, well, this is called a rabbit. I mean, the rabbit. Okay. A traditional deck would have a bevel, but. This, uh, this is not a, <laughs> thankfully not a traditional deck because they always leak. It's a caulking rabbit. <laughs> they traditionally leaked. Well, the traditional stuff always leaks in the traditional places. <laughs> <laughs> caulking rabbit, correct. Rabbit. Yeah, so like Welsh rabbit. Roger that. No rabbit, no, no bunny anywhere in here. No. R-A-B-B-E-T. Okay, you can make noise now. Well, this, this piece here we saved. Yeah. This is because there's going to be some pieces up by the cabin and other places where they're too short to bend. Okay. So we have to saw them. So we discovered this piece of vertical grain. See it? That looks nice. It's basically like a two by five by about eleven six actually. This is the piece you had. This is what Ted sent us. Okay. So I thought his were. This is very wide. We don't cut it this way, right? We don't cut it the other way. Well, this piece here will be resawn this way. Right, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so that the vertical. And then cut it in half or something. Well, cut it to shape. Okay. See, because there's some pieces that are so short and weird that you're not gonna be able to bend them. You have to make a pattern and then cut them to that shape so they pop in. Gotcha. Gotcha. You can, and so you can't use flat grain, which would be here. See, he sent us flat grain, which is what you want. Okay. Because we're it's flat on, on this face, but we're slabbing it off this way. You see the vertical grain, how beautiful that is? Yeah. So, but we happened to get one piece that was... Vertical this Vertical. Way. So, and there'll probably be one or two more of those. So you just save those. But is that a mistake <laughs> that he sent us? No. And then will we ask for it? No, because I told him, I said, if you have a couple of VGs... Okay. Uh, toss them in there. He BGs said, well, I'll do vertical grain. No, BGs. And he said, I'll do what I can do. No. So he said, I'll do what I can do. So This is probably enough. It'd be nice to have one or two more. I think we might find one or two more. Because, uh, uh, well, that's just how it is. So anyway, over here, we're part of this whole process. This here we left alone. 
because this piece is a little fatter than most of them. It's like almost two and a quarter. Okay. Because you're going to have some oddball planks up by the bow there and in the stern where you're going to have to have a rabbit on both sides. Okay. So you want the plank to appear to be the same as those that have a rabbit on one side. One side. So we save these. This one's sacred. We have a couple more like that over here. We save the ones that are over two inch. These. Okay. These over here are pretty generic. Yep, yeah, they have the on the edge. Yeah. Ninety percent of them is beautiful wood. It just sometimes with all woods, but especially with teak, when you start cutting into it, there'll be a knot or an imperfection inside that you never saw. Right. But you can do that by flipping the deck plank, or taking that knot out with a rabbit, or cutting a short plank, yeah. getting rid of it. Um, and so in here, these are. What did I see in here? Yeah, these are pretty generic, meaning good. Yeah, this is a good one. They're all good. This is all top-notch stuff, man. And now that we discovered how much thinner the deck is going to be than we originally hoped, we'll get a little more yield out of the teak. So instead of cutting them three quarters, you're gonna cut them off, or you're gonna start with five eighths, or you'll start with three quarters and mill them to five eighths. Oh no, just a hair over five eighths. Okay. Because then we just skin the backside. Because okay. you don't care about the backside. In fact, but if it's rough, the, it's at good. At the thickest, it's not gonna be more than five eighths. Well, we have to kind of cheat that up towards the cabin, because the cabin sides and up on the bow, they go up to a full three quarters. So we have to get the first two or three courses in out here and maybe add a 30 second so we build it up so that when we sand it it comes out pretty even you can't really tell It'd be a lot of hand work because it's such a variation in the rabbit there um, so that'll get us going for now now see this is our longer stuff here the first First couple of courses are in the 45 and 46 foot length range. Right. Which means these still won't reach in, the, in three. Oh, okay. So there's no use cutting these yet. Because we're cutting the 10s, 11s, and 12s right now. It's gonna take four planks per run anyway. So no use using the long stuff. All right. These are teak deck bending cams. Uh, these are screwed into the deck beams because there's no place to clamp on a plywood deck. And they uh, lip over the teak planks like this. So when you turn this, you have two axes or axes here. Yeah. When you turn it, it pushes the plank and bends it into place and it holds it down from springing up. Are we ready to show this in real life? What do you got? Two more to do? Let's make it happen, Okay, here we go. Okay. <clears throat> for, a, for our spacer, yeah. Okay, take a spacer here. Put it up against there. Well, we, we didn't number these, but... So it's gonna be a little difficult to... to uh, redo them again, but that's all right. You're going to screw this into this brand new beautiful deck. Yes, sir. God, he makes it one day and then defaces it the next day. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I think we got it. Ooh, is that getting warm up here? See, because eventually all these holes we're drilling, yeah. they'll be uh, filled with two picks and epoxy. So it won't matter. So that one's ready to go. So the block is there just to simulate the uh, piece of... Yeah, that's to give you your, right. your distance. It's the right distance. distance right. Uh-huh. And this is only approximate right now because we haven't fine-tuned any of this yet. We're still making jigs and... 
And you always use a bronze screw even though you're going to take it out. Okay. Anything that goes into the finished boat, no galvanized or steel or iron screws allowed. You don't even want little micro pieces. Well, no, it's in case it snaps off or something. Yeah. If the bronze snaps off, it just stays there. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything harmful. All right. Tight, snug, but it needs to still rotate. Yeah. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. <laughs> of the king plank. And this line represents the nib. Okay. This isn't correct. This is an early pattern, but you get the idea. So you come in like this. See where that nib ends? Yeah. And it ends here. But because it's an early pattern, it doesn't fit. <laughs> Maybe it were on this side. There you go. You get the idea. So that's how you lay out your nibs. Okay. Okay, so this goes in. Oops. There. Can you turn this? See how it bends it in? And it holds it down from springing up on you. Mm. We don't quite have this one in the right place, but that's nice. This is too far away. Yeah, we don't. We're still monkeying with the uh, actual. There you go. So you can see that they do two things. They push the plank out, and they hold it down. Sure. Okay. Then we come back up forward here. Oh, where is that block? Oh, uh, that'll work. That piece of yellow cedar up there would be fine. Okay. Okay, easy, light, little one. Come on. Good. Now where were you looking to line it up? This, this, this line right? and that line. Oh, I see, not this little line here. No. Just so the king it. plank, well the next plank will sit like this, of course. And the king plank sits here. And here. That's how they line, that's how they fall in into place. King, the plank, king plank is going to be this piece that goes right up into the nose. Yeah, they'll have like a spear. Head. Uh -huh. And it'll have all these different nibs going down. And they change as they go down, of course, because not only is this tapered, it gets pretty wide back there. Yeah. But the angle that they come in, the king plank is changing ever so slightly as they go. So you can't make a generic pattern. You got to put the plank in. Um, and then, well, let's say that this is the plank. And it's coming in at this angle. Well, this is the king plank. This is the nib. So you bring it into here, like that. Make a mark there, make a mark over here. Okay. Connect the dots and there's your nib. Gotcha, yeah. Now when they're all laid, then you have a, a real tedious process of making the king plank pattern and the king plank. But believe me, <laughs> it's better than trying to so you're do it you, the other way. So you make the king plank fit the opening, not, not the king plank first and fit everything to it. Yeah, you can't do that. I mean, you can do it. If you really like to work with a chisel for weeks at a time, and your name is Geppetto, because <laughs> it's just too tedious. It takes about a day to make a new king plank that is a pattern, the actual king plank, copy it and get it fitted. Then there's another day of cutting the rabbits in it with a router and detail in the corner. So, Is there any sense that um, if, you, if you allow the, king, the, 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 the planks to dictate 
the shape of the king plank that it may not look symmetrical. No, because because these are following this taper. Yeah. And you can cheat. You can cheat this distance as much as an eighth, and nobody can ever notice. Let's say, for instance, that because the boat is not exactly symmetrical, symmetrical yeah. it could be off an eighth or more, which would show up if you were not being careful. But let's say that this plank came in over here, and these two nibs weren't, this one was further ahead of this one. Mm -hmm. You could see that up here. Yes. Okay, so you just don't do that. Just make this nib wider or whatever you have to do to, to make it line up straight across. Yeah. When you get way back into here, You're not it's hard it. to see. Yeah. And then, by the way, and the windlass is going to completely bury the king plank back there. In fact, it'll cut it in half almost. See here? King plank's going to only be about three quarters of an inch wide here. Okay. And then the body of the windlass is like this big. So this, you don't want to make this with a hole in it. You want this king plank done, yeah. and glued down so it's strong, and then you cut this hole. Okay. Because you're going to be cutting that hole not only in the king plank, but probably in a nib or two. Same with this hole. A nib or two is going to be underneath there. Yeah, they'll be, you know, they'll be coming in. There'll probably be a plank like this one here coming in like this somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know? Who cares? Because they all kind of just. But the effect is it'll just dive underneath the windlass. You won't see them. Right. Right. Uh, well, in this case, we right in the old case, the windlass was right there in the hole, mm -hmm. and so the king plank was just kind of continuous. Yeah. You can see that here. We'll see much more of the rear end of the king plank. Uh, Roger that. Probably see in general more of it because this is much much smaller anyway than the previous windlass. All right. Well, tell us about some of the issues you've had here for the last few weeks, uh, getting getting us to this point. Well, there's nothing holding us up now but fear and superstition. <laughs> um, well, we hadn't really had any issues because we planned ahead on the deck panels. We got the deck beams as nice as we could get them. We, the sub king plank, which is this wide, is that wide because when this nib comes in here, let's say you have a nib that ends between the beams. You have to have a place to fasten this plank down. Sure. So we have a three quarter inch, roughly, sub king plank and a quarter inch deck. So we have about a, a one inches of timber right here. Because you don't want to put a screw here. You'll have a screw, let's say if the, let's say the, the plank came in right here. You can almost forego this screw. Okay. Because you're going to have one here in the beam. And even without the glue, if you ever tried to pull that up, just forget it. So you don't want to over fasten there, but you're just going to have a couple that come in here like that. And they'll have to be, you want to keep that screw somewhere in here, not way out at the end. The other one here and so forth. So the only issues we had, we, uh, before we put this down, we just made sure we got as much stuff done inside and back aft as we could because <laughs> you've been inside, haven't you? Yeah. Cozy now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. different, don't it? Sure it does. Yeah, so there you go. There's the light situation. And of course ventilation too. But sooner or later you gotta put that deck on. And here we are. So here we are. So Yeah, so uh, what we're what we're working on right now is getting our height thickness here. And I think that this is pretty close to it. It's uh, about five eighths on the outboard edges. It'll be, it's almost an eighth thicker than the margin boards. Okay. Back in here in certain places it gets up to three quarters. And we're just going to have to customize a few planks here and there. And a lot of real careful planing and sanding after it's caulked. Um, I think we talked about gluing this deck down. How we did it, like this here. See how the tight this seam is now? Okay. Um, by using epoxy, what we've done is effectively connected this side of the boat to that side of the boat. <laughs> and not through just this little margin board rabbit, through the deck beams and everything else that's involved. So if you think about it, this section right here is connected 
this side of the boat to that, not by this little seam here in that one, but by the fact that this is glued to the deck beams, which means that this beam cannot move now in any direction. Right. I'll be back in a couple of weeks. What, what do you think we might see in a couple of weeks? More planks on. A few planks on? Oh, definitely. What we're doing today, tomorrow, and probably the next couple of days, next week, getting all these little weird jigs and things figured out. And of course, today, what we did is we, we did a lot of milling yesterday. And Clint did those two deck panels and a bunch of ancillary stuff yesterday. So what we're doing now is we, we've come up with our pretty much our final thickness, which, is, like we say, is going to vary in places, but it's roughly 5 eighths. So with the quarter inch ply, you've got a deck that's uh, uh, a little over 7 eighths thick. Decent? Well, it's thick enough because the way we're doing it, by gluing everything to everything, yeah. then, well, you can see that <laughs> the quarter inch ply by itself is strong enough to sail the boat right now, okay? Um, because it can't flex, it can't separate. And the teak is not just window dressing because we're gonna be gluing it down to the ply and it's gonna add a lot of longitudinal strength to the deck. <laughs> and does it go down in like complete strips so you do like a course at a time? Yeah, one I'm thinking. One course on this side, one course on the other side. Basically. Yeah, yeah I'm, what I'm thinking is we can probably go. Um, now they get shorter as you go, but then they start getting tougher because you're getting into the here, and there's some clamping issues in there. But um, if you think about it, <laughs> once your deck stock is manufactured, then you uh, it's just a question of fitting it, clamping it in place, drilling it pulling it up, spreading the glue, and screwing it back down. So in theory and probably in practice, you could easily do a course per side per day. And see back aft, this is 45 feet long and two inches wide, which means you've covered eight, 10 square feet with one little two inch wide plank on one side only. So, and while it, the, the little planks up in here and back there are more tedious, they're just not as much to them. In other words, they're only three or four feet long instead of 45. So, it's hard to say how many you can get in here today, but it's not gonna be that difficult. Because if you, you gotta cut the nibs, fit them, put the rabbit in it, clamp it down, drill it, Take it up, wipe it with acetone, um, put the glue down, screw it down, clean up the glue. So a plank well, four feet. Time, so the next time I come back up, maybe we'll have a demo of installing it. Oh yeah. I'll spend, I'll get here early, we'll try to get a whole course in one day. Well that'd be nice. It'd be, fun. It'd be boring. <laughs> You'd have to edit Don't that. Worry, I'll cut it down to 10 minutes. Edit down about, yeah, eight or 10 minutes, max. <laughs> All right, we'll see you in two weeks. All righty. Keep, keep the blue side up. <laughs>